Hi everybody and welcome to my Unruly Housewife channel. Now the other day David and I were playing chess and uh, we've got like this nice glass chess board and uh, we realised that um, there was actually only a chess set with the board and that it would be nice if we had the choice to play checkers or draft as we call it in the UK um, sometimes. So I said well you know what I've got a load of polymer clay I'm sure I can knock up some drafts. <laughs> So uh, this is uh, a quick tutorial on how to make pieces like this so that you can play checkers or drafts um, using bits you've made out of polymer clay. Um, as you can see I've made some different styles, some are um, antiqued, some are slightly more novel than the basic pieces and um, some I've actually made uh, the texture for them myself the mold for them so I'm going to show you how I made these and I'm going to go ahead and do it right now okay well first let's look at how we make these basic um, pieces here and they're not hard to make especially if you own these um, these little wooden stamps and I know a lot of you do because they're kind of from China they're cheap and you get them in lots of different designs and uh, I went for one that had concentric circles because that's something that you see on checkers uh, a lot um, and so that's why I chose them. Now these are an inch wide and that fits very well with my chessboard. If you have a different size chessboard you might say well I can't get one that fits with the size of the squares on my board and if that's the case okay well you don't have to have that. Um, some of the ones that I've made like this one for instance use a, a, just a pattern, a normal pattern and then I've cut it out. So it doesn't have to be something that specifically looks like a piece from a checker set. You know, you can just totally do your own thing. With this one, I've even cut a hole in the middle using one of these little leather punches. Um, because that's an alternative way to store your pieces. You could thread them onto a ribbon, couldn't you, or a shoelace. So I thought that would just be a new kind of invention. But back to these ones here so they're pretty um, easy and straightforward to make and I wanted to put some grip on the back of them because uh, for when you're stacking them now uh, shop bought ones sort of advertise themselves as stacking but when I read the blurb on one of them on um, on Amazon it said oh you still have to pick up the bottom one to move them well yeah so it doesn't really matter does it if they sort of fit together or anything so I've just made a grippy kind of bottom and for that I use this which is a piece of old card that was in the bottom of a um, um, a storage box <laughs> for CDs I think those were the days eh? so um, what I did was I put my clay on this and this clay is cut to uh, is, is rolled out sorry to zero thickness on my atlas or four thicknesses of cardboard if you're going to use strips of um, cereal packet either side to roll it out which is another way to keep it flat if you haven't got a pasta machine so I got my little piece of this and you could get something else if you wanted some sort of very shallow pattern you don't actually have to have a rough side underneath but it does seem to me to be a better idea so I've rolled this out to zero, put it on there, and now I'm going to put another piece on top. And the reason um, that I need two thicknesses is because one thickness on zero, which is the thickest on a uh, an atlas, is not enough. So what are you going to do? Then I select my stamp, and I think just for fun I'll select a different one this time. I'm not using any release on these two things, it hasn't proved necessary, but you may need to use like water or something like that to release it. Now I just put it on there and press down really hard. And um, I could make, you know, three in a row or something if I was to roll out more clay. This is just for you. So I give it a good push all around, take it off, and there you can see it's going to make a reasonably good imprint. And on the underneath, it's just got a nice little bit of roughness. Now I take this away and change it for a piece of paper just to make my life easier. I don't want this to stick to the tile at the moment. I flatten this down and I've got a nice cutter. So I put my cutter on. I don't want to uh, cut it before printing the um, pattern on because that will, when I do do the pattern, then it'll spread it out. If that makes any sense, it'll spread the clay. So I like to do the patterns first, even if I do several. 
and then cut them out. So I push down hard on this. These will need to be sanded around the edges afterwards because it's not very sharp. But if you cut it and do things in this order, it does mean that the sides get kind of smeared together, which is good because you don't want that join to show. You can just lightly tidy this up and that is ready to bake. Now, if you want to have a piece that um, is antiqued like this, I'm not going to show you specifically, but I'll just, because I don't think I'm that good at it, <laughs> to be honest. But um, if you want to antique a piece, what you need to do is to get some acrylic paint, dilute it down quite a bit really, paint it on, just leave it for a couple of seconds and then wipe it off again and you can use a bit of kitchen roll or um, which I'm reaching for but it's under my light a bit of kitchen roll like that wipe the top maybe even a baby wipe just leave it for a very very short time and that means that it sits in the recesses and it gets wiped off the top and with these I found a, quite a bit went on the sides so I kind of went with that and blobbed a bit around the sides I'm not great at antiquing I'm really not um, One of the other ways that I made a mould for my piece, you see here, I decided I didn't have a kind of steampunky stamp to use and I wanted a steampunky effect. So I left this one, I didn't even texture the back. And what I did with that was I got this. Lots of us have got sets of bits and cogs and things. I very rarely use mine, I've just got that sitting there in a tic-tac box. Um, so I got this and I put it down on the tile and I made this over it. And I made it with this amazing mould putty. So um, this comes in two pots. One is yellow, one is, one. this one's yellow, one's yellow, one's white. You get uh, a little bit from each, an equal amount. You mix them together quite quickly in your hands until they are all blended. And then you push them over the top and leave for 20 minutes. And then you end up with this. So once you have this, you can use it in much the same way as I used uh, my stamp. You push it down onto your clay, nice and evenly, nice and hard. Take it off. I haven't done that properly, but you can kind of get the idea. And then cut it out. Um, when I made this, I just dusted the top of it. I've got some perfect pearls in copper. It's this mica powder on my finger, highlighted the bit that was sticking up, and uh, then baked it. And I varnished this, but I kind of wish I hadn't. I think it looked better before it was varnished. Last but not least was this, which I just did using this texture sheet and then just picked out where to do it from and cut it out. Stars are going to be a bit harder to stack when you make kings, but you know what? It's going to be worth it because think what a cool little player you are going to look like. <laughs> When you bake things you want to leave them on a piece of paper like this whoops which i've just thrown on the floor okay let's let's not do that when you bake them you want to bake them on a piece of paper like this preferably not one that's been on the floor and uh, that will stop the underside from going shiny and put them in the oven bake them according to your manufacturer's instructions and i advise you definitely advise you to use an oven thermometer ah now then i nearly forgot to say this you remember when i said to you about antiquing this that's after it's baked please don't try and antique it while it's raw i think that's going to be way too difficult oh dear that's the sort of thing where i really get myself into trouble um the pieces that are varnished here were varnished using americana dura clear gloss varnish but there are lots of other alternatives this is just an easy one for me to get in the uk thank you very much for watching i hope you enjoyed that and i hope you have a go at making your own cool pieces for your uh, checkers or drafts board 
If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing to my channel, ask any comments and questions down below. And if you wish to, you can follow me on Instagram or you can follow me on Facebook, where I tend to try and post things um, as well as my videos that are kind of behind the scenes shots or whatever. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I love you all. Bye.